Hey everybody, it's Nick here. Welcome to our newest show, Nick Knacks. This is where I get into some of my favorite equipment that I use to produce our content on YouTube. You know, as a one man band, I have to work really hard to make our stuff look good and I use a lot of different equipment to do so. One of my favorite pieces of gear is in fact a slider. This is just a piece of equipment that's meant to kind of move a camera back and forth and add a little bit of dynamics to a shot that might otherwise be stationary. And it's a great piece of gear. The problem is that I am so often in front of the camera and it doesn't allow me to use this piece of gear very much because it's pretty difficult to be in front of a camera and operate a slider at the same time. But there are ways around that. My friends at McBain Camera have hooked me up with a really awesome set of gear that I'm about to unbox. I've used this stuff before, it's called Syrup. And the product is called a Genie. I've never used this one, this is a Genie Mini. And in here as well, we've got this bad boy, uh, the Genie, just Genie. Okay, so this thing is not cheap. Uh, you're looking at about 1500 bucks worth of stuff here, but it's gonna be really cool. I'm just gonna get right to the unboxing here. Okay, so this is everything that comes in a box with the Syrup Genie. You've got your unit here that has a built-in battery. It attaches to your tripod or your slider on the bottom here, and your camera goes up here on a ball joint. Uh, it comes with this nifty little contraption here, and this is meant to kind of get in the middle of, uh, of, your, of your unit here and your slider, so this connects and it allows you to attach the ropes here to either side, and this unit, being a rotational thing on the bottom, sits on there, and it can actually move this carousel back and forth, effectively freeing you up to have this running as a robot, and you can be in front of the camera. It's kind of a cool thing. So, I've used this before. It's a pretty nifty little gadget. Um, uh, and then we've got here some clamps as well that go on either end of your uh, given dolly or slider. It works with any slider you have. Uh, and the cool thing too is that this actually works on a rope system as well. You can string a rope between two trees and then uh, have a, just a continuous line and you can inch your camera along incrementally over the course of a very long period of time or just have an automatic slider go the whole run. It's kind of a cool system. So the thing though is that if you have your one axis of movement uh, tied up moving your slider back and forth, you don't have the ability to pan your camera while it's dollying and that kind of limits your options of what you can do with this. Basically just like, lateral shots moving along something like this. You're not gonna be able to kind of track on something as you move along it. So that's where this unit, the Syrup Genie Mini comes in handy. This little guy, uh, and I'll just do the unboxing here really quick as well. Ugh. So yeah, I mean, th this is pretty straightforward. This is all that comes in the box here. It's just this little puck, a USB cord, and some kind of nifty camera wipe, I guess. Syrup branded, kind of a funny name. There's so many funny four letter words out there these days. But anyways, uh, this puck will go on top of here like so. Your camera will go on here. There is a sync cable that I have right here that links the two units up. And this allows you to have that one extra axis of movement so that you'll be able to pan things like this. So we've got ourselves obviously the link cable as I just mentioned, that'll come in handy. And then as well, I'm running all Sony cameras so I have the cable to hook up to a Sony camera. And that's for the time-lapsing aspects of this thing. So uh, that's all there is to it. Really, I am going to get to playing with it and see if I can't figure it out. We'll check back with you soon here. Okay, so function one here is pretty cool. Let me just go to video, really intuitive menu. You can create your own presets. So this one is uh, short bounce. So it's really kind of loud. 
don't know how that would be while I was recording audio, but you can see it's pretty cool because it'll go. That's quite loud. <laughs> I don't know about that. But this is a nice function here. I don't have the genie part set up yet. It's just using the single motor in here. Just wanted to see if I could get the functionality right. And it's working pretty good. You can see how this would be helpful for a single guy shooting by himself, right? Like this can just be moving along. I can be sitting in front of the camera. It can be recording me. Pretty dang helpful. Uh, the other cool thing about this too is I just wanna show you how easy it is to switch here. The whole unit comes off of that base with the string and it fits nicely onto a tripod, at which point uh, you can just go to video again. And just like that, you have something that essentially can just turn your camera automatically. Pretty awesome. Love it. Love it. Okay, so that's part one. Just the Genie part. Now let's get to the Genie Mini. Is that what it's called? Yeah, the Genie Mini. Check this out. So we can see here that as this axis is moving, the camera itself is also panning. Pretty amazing. Kind of loud, but still pretty amazing. And it's going to bounce back. So you can see why this is helpful for a single guy shooting by himself. It's just, I mean, it's taking so much work out of it, right? I can sit here. I don't have to touch the camera. This is pretty fantastic. Um, obviously, taking this base off of here and putting it onto a tripod with two axes rotating on the same axis doesn't really make a lot of sense. Not going to give you anything extra. But uh, Genie does make like a 90 degree arm. So you can set this on its side and then kind of have your camera doing a, a, a sort of panning or tilting rather and a pan at the same time with this base on a tripod. Also kind of a cool feature. I mean, I'm just loving this. Once you've dialed it in, you know, you've effectively got just this second shooter moving back and forth. And I'm going to have to do some tests with sound to see if it's actually usable while, you know, shooting maybe 10 feet away. This close, pretty loud. So another thing you'll notice about it too is that it is, it's a pretty tall unit. Um, that's going to have some bearing if you try to do like a vertical slider or anything of that nature. But with a small camera, I mean, it's, it's not crazy unstable or anything. I think it's going to do the trick just fine. Your tension of your rope is also another concern too. You want to make sure it's tight, but not too tight because it'll affect when it gets to the ends. I've got it jerry-rigged on here. I would do a better job normally. But that's an advantage to working by yourself. Nobody can tell you you did a crappy job, so... Now for the time-lapse part. I'm gonna see if I can get the intervalometer that's built into here to function with the camera and snap a shot, move the camera, snap a shot, move the camera. That's the next one. Okay, I've gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with this because I've been fiddling with it for like, maybe like 10 minutes or so while I was having the camera off. And uh, this is like pretty straightforward. Check this out. You might not be able to discern this, but I'm just freaking out right now. So this is basically moving, snapping, moving, snapping, moving, snapping, creating a motion time-lapse shot that has not only this lateral axis of movement, but also this nice panning as well. I mean, this is just so great. The kind of shots you can do with this are really spectacular looking. And I mean, it's, it's the form factor of this equipment is really quite awesome. So I guess now to some cons with the system. Obviously the noise is something that we've already seen. Uh, cable management is what it is. You're not gonna get away from that. I'm wondering if you could power this and this while it's doing its thing because both of these have a built-in battery and I can see that being quite a limitation. This takes a USB power source and this takes a 15 volt DC in. So mm, a guy could probably rig something up 
just to make this powered for a long time. And speaking of power, another issue I can see is that typically with Sony cameras, including the one that I'm using to record there, uh, they have a pretty small internal battery. And if you're recording nonstop, it's gonna chew through battery. On the camera that is actually recording this right now, I actually have the camera hooked up to a USB block battery, meaning I can run it for like hours and hours on end. Uh, I would do the same thing here, the trouble is, is that in order for this to trigger the camera, it's taking up the port that would normally have the power going in. And I'm not gonna play with like a Y connection to send power in there. I think that's a bad idea. So I would have to have a lot of small batteries for this or that camera, depending on what I have on here. And that's a limitation, but it is what it is. And considering what this is giving me, you know, I can deal with that. So I'll do some shots with this and just add them right now. Beauty shot time. 